I'm Jeffrey Applebaum, and this is the blog entry. What I'm going to be discussing is um, the advancements in digital technology in context of Lev Manovich's article, uh, What is Digital Cinema? And I'll be bringing that in reference to Andre Bazin's The Ontology of the Photographic Image. In the context of film theory, our website is to bring conscious that which is normally unconscious in cinema. However, in this blog entry, what is important is to look at when bringing forth these ideas uh, that are previously in our unconscious, how is it that filmmakers use these concepts in their films? Or how is it that people in the media can also use these forms? To start out with, we're going to have a little bit of fun and we're going to look at some of my videos uh, that I have on YouTube. And you can go over to www.youtube.com and uh, slash Jeffrey Applebaum and you'll see some of my comedy videos. Here's my first video here. As you can see, I'm up against a green screen. And it's absolutely intended to be shot in front of a green screen. Uh, there's no secret about that. Uh, as you can see, I uh, put a little logo in the back. Um, and you'll see in a second, it's quite obvious that I'm in front of a green screen. Uh, and it's built into the narrative that this character is supposed to be in front of the green screen. Uh, it's not hidden. But in, but if we look here, uh, you'll notice that uh, it's not just a straight green screen. I've actually added an effect here. If I show you, if I take that out, you'll see that I'm covering a mistake. Uh, which is the lights that are next to me, I had to crop it out. So what looks like a complete solid background is actually not a complete solid background. It's actually uh, a cropped image. And this is uh, consistent with what uh, Manovich is saying about the manipulation of individual images via paint program or algorithmic image processing it becomes as easy as arranging sequences of images in time. Both simply involved a cut and paste. So I simply cut and paste and crop that over. And in fact, if you'll see the other uh, fakeness about this shot is that it looks like it has an aspect ratio of 4-3. But when I take the 4-3 off, you'll see that it's a complete mess. That's my set. That's actually my living room. Uh, it's a complete and utter mess. Uh, but I shot that knowing uh, that I would be cropping all of this out. And which also uh, falls in line with uh, what Manovich is saying. Uh, if live action was left intact in traditional filmmaking, now it functions as raw material for further composit compositing, animating, and morphing. The result? A new kind of realism, which can be described as, quote, something which is intended to look exactly as if it could have happened, although it really could not. And this is especially true when we look at uh, my next video. Um, as you can see, there's a beautiful girl. There I am. Um, I'm about to uh, decide as to whether she's checking me out. Yes, she is. And uh, I'm going to go across the street and go get her. Boom. And uh, that was designed to look like it's real. Uh, that is an actual real truck. Uh, I really did cross the street, although I was not really hit by the truck. Uh, so it was intended to look real, even though it wasn't. Now, what's interesting about this is that in the first video, the comedy uh, derived from the fact that it was supposed to look fake. This one, the comedy comes from it's supposed to look real. You know it's fake because I'm still here. I'm fine. I'm not handicapped. And of her reaction, where she simply uh, looks shocked and then uh, writes on her uh, form that another pedestrian was killed at the sidewalk and she was the one who had caused that. Now, why is this important? A couple of reasons. First of all, when we go to the cinema, there's an unconscious conversation that we have when we're watching a fictional film, and that would be, I'm watching something that is not real. I am watching something that is a lie, and I'm paying good money to be lied to, in a good way. However, what happens when some of those conversations that we have with the, the material that we're viewing, we're not intended to be lied to? In other words, we 
take as real what we are seeing. And we do take as real what we are seeing. If you look at Andre Bazin's ontology of the photographic image, the way we as audiences perceive photographs and the way our minds interpret cinema and photographs is that it's absolutely real. Uh, the mind makes no distinction between what it's seeing being true or false when it has suspended its criticality or its disbelief. So when we suspend our criticality or disbelief, we are in the moment believing what we're seeing. We eliminate those processes that says this can't be real. Only later when we look at it with a critical mind do we say, oh, okay, that probably wasn't real. However, how often do we give ourselves the time to really question what we're looking at? Now, this may not be important for the average filmmaker when they're going to, see, with the average film viewer when they're going to see a fictional film. They don't sit down and say, okay, what was real about that 3D animation? That's not really something that people do and it's not really necessary. What it may be necessary for is for filmmakers to go and sit down after a film and say, that was interesting, how did they come up with that so that I can come up with that in my film? However, what's important here is what about when we're watching something that we are told is real? We as, an, as the, the, the general population, such as news events, is it possible that people in the news media are using some 3D animation or uh, uh, digital compositing to create media events? Lev Manovich is saying that the advances in digital cinema eliminate cinema's indexicality. Therefore, it's no longer representing an actual event. He quotes cinema as being a, uh, a piece of art, a footprint made into art, and the digital processing uh, has eliminated that. And it, go, it should be mentioned that Lev Manovich is saying that because of the compositing and the mutability and the changeability of digital images, cinema is now a subset genre of painting. Whereas the photographic image, as much as we could manipulate uh, the mise-en-scene, like with the lighting and the camera work, the makeup, uh, and the setting, we could not manipulate it the way we can. If you look at my video, for example, you think it's a solid green screen, it's not. Um, and you, we don't even, you wouldn't even question that that, that would be a, a fake cropping of that. Anything can be substituted, uh, and then what I'm bringing up is, well, if anything can be substituted and rad rather easily, well, in what circumstances are they being substituted? Are they only being substituted in fictional films? Could they be substituted in other films or in other forms of visual media uh, where cinema is used to convince us of something that is true that is not? And I bring that back to Bazin saying, because there is a mechanical apparatus between ourselves and what we're viewing in the photograph, therefore it is indexical, it is, it is a representation of something real. We unconsciously understand that. Bazin, and I think one of the reasons why it's, it's such a revered article and it's still used to this day, is that it brings forth consciously what we perceived or what we all believe unconsciously. So we're looking at a photograph, you know, how many times do we hear the words photographic evidence, photo finish, we rely on photographs to give us reality because we rely on photographs and we believe them to be real. So unconsciously, we are believing what we are seeing. However, the change has occurred where the quality of digital cinema, the digital cameras and the digital effects has made it such that these could be substituted very, very easily without our even knowing that they're being done. And sometimes we put the trust uh, in filmmakers to deliver the truth unless we know that we're seeing something fictional. And I'm bringing forth the question and the possibility is that what if what we're watching we believe to be true actually isn't. I'm also not saying what events I believe to be uh, not real. Uh, I invite you, if you're watching this, to first of all begin questioning what you are seeing um, and to uh, um, come up with your own ideas your own events that you think it's possible that they're not as real as you think they might be. One of the most profound quotes that, uh, that I can bring from Manovich, he says, as a media technology, cinema's role was to capture and to store visible reality. The difficulty of modifying images once they were recorded was exactly what gave cinema 
its value as a document, assuring its authenticity. The mutability of digital data impairs the value of cinema as documents of reality. And that's what cinema was uh, up until the 1990s when digital cinema began really moving forward. Um, and especially 3D, because we think sometimes when we, we hear the word digital animation, we might hear stuff that's created by Pixar, so it might be a pink elephant dancing across the screen. And you may be listening to this or watching this and saying, well, I know when I'm seeing a 3D animation, uh, I know what a penguin looks like if it's 3D animated. However, that's not everything that 3D animation is. 3D animation can be many, many objects that we see that even in a fictional film are so well done that we wouldn't pick up the fact that they were done digitally. This technology is out there and it can be used by many people and as Lev Manovich says, as long as there's enough money and time uh, to go around, then this kind of animation can be used by whoever has the means to use it. This is not the point of what Lev Manovich is saying. This is only uh, the thesis of this video blog. Uh, Lev Manovich is separating uh, digital cinema from cinema, live action from created digital cinema, uh, and that there's a whole new genre of cinema and that cinema itself can no longer be considered indexical as long as it is digital because it can't be related to anything real. I'm taking that stance and saying that because of what Bazin is saying, uh, of what we perceived as that because the photograph was at one point a representation of reality, it was indexical, it was uh, a footprint made into art, we still view cinema as that. Even though it's digital, we don't process these things of, oh, well, that means that a lot of things have changed in cinema and that anything in that image can be changed. As I showed in my video, just a tiny little corner that I cropped out, one wouldn't even consider. No one said to me, oh, wow, I know you cropped that image. No one has ever said that to me. Um, and as you saw in my second video, as the truck hits me, there, that's a real truck. I'm a real person. That was not a computer composited truck. The only thing that was computer posited, composited in that was the way my body flew across the screen. That's it. And if you break down that video, you can see that those are actually two separate shots because of uh, somebody walking in the background. Behind me, when I'm walking across the street, my background. Those are just two separate shots, but they, they look and feel very, very real. So that sums up this blog entry. Uh, I invite you to begin to question what you're seeing in the media. Uh, perhaps not when you're watching it, but afterwards when you're watching it, question these things. What's at stake in these stories that you're reading? Who's making these things? Do they have access to these kinds of technologies? And uh, how could it be possible that they would? Even if they didn't, how could it be possible? Thanks for watching.